Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki was dominated as Man of the Year during the economic forum held in Kronitsa Zdroj in southern Poland. The main achievement was the lowest rate of unemployment in Poland since the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, lowering taxes for small businesses and the least well-off, as well as abolishing personal income tax for those under 26 years of age, were also contributory factors. A nightmare for the neoliberals. This is how the Prime Minister Morawiecki was described by the host of the event when the announcement of him getting this prestigious award was made at the Economic Forum in Krenica. The lowest unemployment, economic reforms and the first balanced budget are the main achievements of the 2019 laureate. Polska ma zrównoważony budget. We have a balanced budget and one of the best economic situations in Europe. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is because the economy is not only crunching numbers, the economy is working with people and for most working for people. And when the reality knocks at our door of a new economy, new technology, then we want to embrace it, invite it to our society. And we believe that such a small society, such a glorious history as ours, has to mirror a fantastic future. I deeply believe in this, I am convinced of it. When I am asked by people who know a bit of history in general about the role of Poland in that world history. Why is Poland, a country of such great potential, still not able to flourish? Why are you not spreading your wings? Ladies and gentlemen, let those wings, those two wings, first our flourishing economy and second social care, lead us into the bright economic future. This is, dear Polish entrepreneurs, dear Polish business people, our duty, this is our calling and at the same time our goal. The bank PKO BP received the title of Company of the Year of the Economic Forum in Krenica. After the three busy days of various economic debates, the event has ended today. According to a survey conducted by the Institute for Social Research and Market, IBRIS, before the Polish parliamentary elections in the autumn, if the elections were held today, 43.4% of voters would vote for the ruling Law and Justice Party. If the Polish parliamentary elections were held today, the ruling Law and Justice Party would win with 43.4% of the votes. In second place would be the Civic Coalition on 21.2%. Democratic Left Alliance, Spring and the Together Party would receive 14.1%. The Polish People's Party, together with the Polish Coalition, would also cross the electoral threshold by receiving 5.7%. The British House of Commons yesterday passed a bill which potentially blocks a no-deal Brexit and postpones the deadline for exiting the European Union until the end of January next year if no agreement is reached by 19th of October this year. In response, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, called for an early general election, but the government motion was also rejected by the House of Commons. 327 MPs voted in favour of the bill and 299 against. Among the MPs supporting the bill to block a no-deal Brexit were 22 MPs from the Conservative Party, who subsequently had the party whip withdrawn. The motion for an early general election was supported by only 298 MPs, falling short of the required threshold of 434 votes. The bill will go to the House of Lords, which has said it will pass it and return it to the Commons on Monday. The government has said it will not oppose the bill, which is expected to receive royal assent before Parliament is prorogued. The text of the bill was prepared by a cross-party group of MPs opposed to leaving the European Union without a deal. The current date for the United Kingdom to leave the EU is October 31st. Hurricane Dorian, which is ravaging the eastern coast of the United States, has already claimed the lives of 20 people in the Bahamas. The Category 5 hurricane is becoming stronger. The United States uniformed services are doing what they can to secure the lives and well-being of citizens in the affected areas. Mr. the storm, I was in the front room and I watched a tornado um, carry my roof and I was just there like, this can't be real. Mother and one of our family friends, her name is Quella, she's crying, there's crying, everybody's panicking. They came in my room, my room is the only room standing so you know we just packing what we could have packed and we just running through to the hurricane at the same time we watched the tornado lift my neighbor house up and bring it back down <sighs> my island of abaco is finished everything is gone no banks no stores no nothing it'll take at least four to five years to complete only marsh but i don't know how long it'll take for the rest of the island but nothing is here 
nothing at all. Everything is gone, just bodies. The scale of destruction left behind by Dorian, as shown from the satellite pictures, sadly points to the fact that more bodies could soon be found among the ruins. Nearly 70,000 people are in need of immediate assistance. The victims of the natural disaster require food, water, medicine and orphan places to stay, as their homes were almost completely covered by water. The United Nations has decided to allocate a billion dollars for the most badly affected victims. The hurricane hit the Bahamas on Sunday night. The wind speed reached 354 kilometers per hour and the flood waves were up to 7 meters high. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow. Hello and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. The forecast for tonight calls for partly cloudy skies in the northwest and the southeast, while the central regions of the country can expect cloudy skies. The warmest city will be Warsaw at 15 degrees, while the coldest spot on the map will be Zielona Góra at 10 degrees centigrade. Tomorrow we can expect showers in Koszalin, Katowice and Kraków. The rest of the country can expect partly cloudy skies, the temperatures will vary from 17 to 23 degrees. That is all for now. I invite you to stay with us and to join us later on for Poland Daily Business. Poland Daily Business Edition. We are now at Krynica Zdruj Economic Forum, south of the country, and uh, we're talking to the business leaders, people who are visiting this event, including Marcin Gnyszka of Towarzystwo Biznesowe or Business Hello. Association. Sir, welcome to the show. Uh, what are the, what is the mood of the conversation on this forum? Uh, I think that I think that uh, the mood is very optimistic. Uh, we can see that uh, Polish economy is. Uh, um, is buzzing, is blowing uh, in positive uh, sense. Uh, so I, I, I think that the dominant mood is very, uh, very positive. Um, uh, and what I've, uh, what I've seen uh, today, I, I had a reflection that uh, I can, uh, I, I know who is a businessman, who is a politician, and who is a journalist, because journalists are talking about the merit. Um, side of, of panels. Yeah? They, when they drink coffee, they are talking about panels, the, the, the subjects, and, and so on. Businessmen are talking about people. I, I've met with this man, I've met with that man, and, and I plan to, ma to, to meet this one. And politicians, they are talking about politics. <laughs> so even in Krynica, they are talking about this, what they are talking about in Warsaw, and so on. But it, it's funny that apparently whole Warsaw moved here because yeah, yeah. is meeting <laughs> trends <laughs> since their high school. Yeah, it's uh, re really significant that uh, in Krynica uh, every year you can see people you don't have time to meet in Warsaw. And uh, in this uh, pavement you you see almost everyone from Warsaw. The stretch is about 300 meters long and yeah. <laughs> virtually all the members of government, mm -hmm. all the members of um, CEOs of the big companies companies, yeah. famous Everyone journalists, is yes, that's <laughs> across, and w what is happening after such a meeting? I mean, is there any trust between those people? Yeah, I think, I think that it, uh, this is a very specific moment when you can, um, ooh, when you can create a, a bonding, bonding relations with people you know from internet, from Twitter, with people you virtually know. Uh, and after that, uh, you can w work on this re relation. The very fundamental thing in networking is to make a follow-up. Uh, so for, for me, 
those months uh, after Krynica um, are, are months of follow-ups and uh, of meetings on um, coffee, of course in Ethno Cafe, uh, with people I've met, I, I've met here. You founded the Business Association, a conservative based on the Christian values um, organization that groups businesses from various yeah. uh, segments and across the uh, high, small one, big one, very big ones. Mm, how many of your uh, members are here in uh, I've met uh, I've met almost five people uh, here but uh, w what is really uh, funny I can be uh, for many of them uh, representative here so f for example uh, yesterday I've uh, chosen w w w one of panels not because of my uh, aspirations uh, but to get no one person from the panel why because one of my members needs to uh, cooperate with this co company. Uh, we know that you're an indis <laughs> indispensable person. Yeah, yeah. So it is really, really amazing for me that I can also serve not only my interest, but also uh, the interest of my my members. Mm -hmm. uh, this is interesting uh, because uh, we see lots of people are coming here in order to get new contacts, in order to get new orders perhaps, or yeah. new, associ new affiliations. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think this a good aim uh, to have here but of course you you, you have to uh, you, you, you have to know how to ne network uh, people who are uh, who think that networking is about selling uh, are wrong yeah? uh, networking is about uh, establishing relationships and Krinza uh, is really a good place to to establish to start but to make fruits of it you have to spend some time Sorry. Thank you very much for this conversation. If you are looking for a uh, networking specialist, Marcin Ignishka is the one. Welcome. <laughs> and that was it for Poland Daily Business Tonight. Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily Business Weather. The forecast for tomorrow calls for partly cloudy skies in most areas of the country. The only exceptions will be Koszalin, Katowice and Krakow, where we can expect to see showers. Tomorrow the temperature will vary between 17 to 23 degrees centigrade. In Europe, the brightest and sunniest spots will be Madrid, Lisbon and Athens, where we can expect to see clear skies. Dublin, London, Oslo and Rome can expect to see rain. Paris and Bern will see cloudy skies, and the rest of the continent can expect to see partly cloudy skies. The temperature will vary between 14 to 33 degrees, with Oslo being the coldest spot on the map and Athens the warmest. Thank you for joining us, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Tonight we will talk about music and culture, ladies and gentlemen, and we have interesting guest in the studio, Przemysław Majewski of Koszalin, a musician, rapper and publisher. Sir, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. In 1930s, Poland had quite an interesting popular culture. These songs were sung all over the Europe, uh, the, the things like the last uh, Saturday, last Sunday, the Ostatnia Niedziela, mm -hmm. was very, very popular, unlike today. We, our culture is like much more inward. We, we, we don't really expand outside. Polish musicians of those times were much more popular than they are now. Nowadays, the English language is much more popular. People wanted to listen to every kind of music back then, regardless of the languages, but that's just my opinion. The sounds of violin records were much better, we could hear all the instruments. Nowadays everything sounds the same. There are many media companies that promote their artists in Western Europe, and the music industry is not that easy for the Polish artists. You are wearing something that resembles the 1930s style, is it something that you bought at the shop? 
zaprzyjaźniłem się z krawcem, który. I'm friends with a tailor, and thanks to him, I have many beautiful suits like that. This is my third suit. His name is Karol Wolarski. I couldn't find a tailor anywhere close to where I live. I found him in the city of Bydgoszcz. Every time I go to Warsaw, I visit Bydgoszcz and have a coffee with him. He told me he's going to have another suit for me ready soon. It's very interesting speciality. Have you chosen your style from the 1930s catalog? The first suit, we both wanted it to look like a typical suit from the 20s and 30s. We can see it on an album cover. The material from the suits comes from London. And people made suits from this particular material 100 years ago. Carol took care of every single detail here. Then we made the Lviv suit. And this is the third one for everyday use. We can listen to the music, the golden chrysanthemums. Is that a good idea? It's a very good idea. Okay. Let us listen to the uh, piece of Mr. Um, Przemysław Majewski. Chrysanthemy złociste, uśmiechnijcie się do mnie. Może wśród dawnych wspomnień zaginie żal. Chciał, żebyście do mnie uśmiechnęły się Od czasu do czasu W fasonie pełny łez W uchu szedł, słyszę Lustrze widzę cień, milczę Choć wiem, że rozumiecie mnie najlepiej Tak jest, to nie sen Coś kończy się, prawda, bo musi Okay, that's very interesting Good music, good mix And the, the thing that is very special Is that anyone who wants can, get, can have your music for free and you are even sending the, your disc to the recipients. If someone sends me an email and tells me that he has a difficult financial situation but wants to have my CDs, I pay for the delivery cost as well. All the information is on my website. The action is called 100 CDs for the 100th anniversary of Poland regaining its independence. At this moment, I gave away over 90 million CDs. I'm planning to finish this action on September 11th. This album is not on sale, it's for free. I just wanted to do something for Poles and for Poland. What you can do for your country, this is important. If people want, they can pay me. The delivery costs are around 15 slotis. I can send five albums for the entire family if someone wants, but only in Poland. This is your personal input into the celebration of a hundredth anniversary of regaining independence by Poland. This is very unusual, sir, I must say. Thank you. I decided to do something. I celebrated my 40th birthday this year. My youth is long gone, but I wanted to do something that's worth something. Thank you very much for that. And let's finish that conversation with the clip track number 11. Mam biało czerwone serce. My heart is uh, white and red. Yes, that's right. Przemysław Majewski of Koszalin, musician, artist, was our guest tonight. Tysiąc lat, czas się pokłonić, oddać hołd tym, którzy byli skłonni poświęcić swoje życie, zginąć dla wolnej Polski najważniejsze wartości. Bóg, honor, ojczyzna, biały orzeł w koronie, w kotle, nie jedna blizna, nie jedna rana. Nieraz wiadomość przyszła, nie wróci syn do domu od krwi Czerwona Wisła, trzeba stanąć, do walki wysłać Na wojnę syna zagrożona, rzecz pospolita, wróg wojnę zaczyna Linia granicy przekroczona, jest sygnał, mamy przykład Od czasów piastów, jak to wygrać? Kolejna bitwa, kolejne życie poświęcone Średnio wiecze, dusze granice, ziemie przyłączone Kolejna swoje, kolejne pokolenie, całe jest pospolite Ruszenie w życiu pospolite, siadmy w morze Mam czerwone serce, barwy ojczyste, nikt Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku myślę Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku piszę Tu dla tych, którzy przelali krew za ojczyznę Mam biało-czerwone serce, barwy ojczyste Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku myślę Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku piszę Tu dla tych, którzy przelali krew za ojczyznę
podzielili Polskę między siebie w kolejnych rozbiorach Chcieli zniszczyć narodowo ziemię uznali za swoją pod kontrolą Chcieli mieć wszystko, ojczyznę kroją, pierwszy, drugi, trzeci rozbiór Liby drop młotów, pak, skąd ja to znam Historia lubi się powtarzać, nie wiedzą jak, nie wiedzą jak złamać Polaka Dziesiątki lat, mijają następna dekada Polak jak stał, stoi w ręku biało-czerwona flaga Następny atak, za brata, niełatwo przyszło, już było widać ręki kata Cud nad Wisłą, pierwsza i druga wojna, niepewna przyszłość Pod okupacją wroga znowu pół wieku tak wyszło Wszystko, dziś mamy wolność niecałe 30 lat Czy gramy czysto? Nie każdy odpowiada sam Dzięki tym ludziom mogę pisać na kolejny trak Ty możesz słuchać tego głośno, historia Mam biało-czerwone serce, barwy ojczyste Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku myślę Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku piszę Tu dla tych, którzy przelali krew za ojczyznę Mam biało-czerwone serce, barwy ojczyste Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku myślę Nikt mi tego nie zabierze, po polsku piszę Tu dla tych, którzy przelali krew za ojczyznę Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are discussing the events of World War II and the consequences for the Polish nation. We are in the Ochota district of Warsaw, right in front of the monument dedicated to the soldiers who held up the Germans for 19 days on September 1939. The historian Dr. Krzysztof Jabłonka will guide us through this turbulent time in Polish history. Today we're talking about the German invasion in 1939, and as I know, uh, the Polish government didn't really sign a capitulation, so I was wondering, during or even after the invasion, how did the Polish government function and where did they function from? Oczywiście, Polska, zarówno jako naród, jak również jako państwo, nigdy nie podpisały kapitulacji z Niemcami. As a nation, as well as a state, Poland has never signed a statement of surrender. The Polish government, army and a major part of society that emigrated to Hungary or Romania through the southeastern borderlands continued the fight and split into two streams. One of them went to the French zone in Syria and Lebanon throughout Bulgaria and Turkey, where they formed the Polish Independent Carpathian Brigade. The the second stream wanted to get to France through Yugoslavia and Italy, which happened to be very kind to Poles, despite their alliance with Hitler. That is why they led over 150,000 soldiers to get to France, where not only the Polish army and four air and navy divisions were organized, but also the Polish government in exile. Because both, the president and the prime minister, were interned in Romania. They decided to appoint new authorities led by the head of state, General Władysław Sikorski. Sikorski formed the new government out of opponents of the previous one. The newly appointed government continued the fight with the Germans, but also started the internal fight with Piłsudski's supporters. The Polish government formed in Paris decided to move to Loire, located in the region of Anjoy. The government got an ex-territorial residence permit, which was analogous to the Belgian government during World War I. Gdy Francja jako państwo skapitulowało i przeszło na stronę when France capitulated and took the side of the Axis powers as France Vichy, Poles left France and got to Great Britain. They got there through the English Channel called La Manche, where the Polish fleet sacrificially transported British, French and Poles from the port in western France and where the British fleet took all Polish troops. All the way to get to Britain was through Spain and Portugal, which had a good relationship with Great Britain. And that's the two ways they took to get there. While almost the entire division of Poles crossed the border with Switzerland, they aroused great enthusiasm and respect. 
wzbudzając przy tym ogromny entuzjazm i szacunek Szwajcarów, gdyż w odróżnieniu od y, wojska francuskiego, które w bałaganie, w ogromnym tłumie przekraczało granice, Polacy w zwartych szeregach, krokiem defiladowym, ze sztandarem na czele. That is because, unlike the French army, which crossed the border in a total mess, Poles crossed it by walking in line with the flag in their hands and by singing the national anthem, Poland is not yet lost. The Polish artillery was shooting at the very border with Switzerland till the last moment and then immediately retreated to a neutral country after their last shot. They lived there till 1945 as road constructors and future defenders of Switzerland in case of the German invasion. Soldiers of the most experience had to defend Switzerland. The Swiss had a great respect for them. Finally, there were several hundred of Polish pilots who formed around 16 air divisions in Great Britain. They helped Great Britain win a huge battle that took place in 1940. O zwycięstwie, choć było ich niewielu. There were only few of them, but their fighting style revolutionized the British people and encouraged them to destroy all German convoys flying over England. Finally, the entire Polish fleet that survived reached the shore of Great Britain, including submarines, the entire fleet of Polish merchant ships converted into warships, for example, the famous lucky ship called MS Batory, which was used in transporting British and Polish children from Great Britain to its dominions, located in the Southern Hemisphere. This is when Poland concluded a pact for death and life with Great Britain. Churchill shook hands with Sikorski and asked him if Poland would be the only country that will always support Great Britain. Pact na śmierć i życie. Churchill wyciągnął do Premiera Sikorskiego rękę i powiedział, czy Polacy. Let us remember that after the fall of France, only Great Britain waged a war. What is more, the Soviet Union was helping and destroying them by providing kerosene and gas used for the bombing of London. And Poles were their only real ally. Churchill said that it is so rare in history where so many owed so much to only a few że nigdy w historii nie pamiętano, aby tak wielu zawdzięczało tak wiele, tak niewielu. In 1941, the Germans attacked the Soviets, and I would imagine that would have a very dynamic shift in geopolitics. I was wondering, how did the Poles and the Soviet get together, and what were the relationships at the time? Rzeczywiście, z chwilą, gdy um, Hitler wyprzedził atak sowiecki i napadł na the Soviet Union quickly destroyed all border troops because it was prepared to attack and not to defend. It caused the catastrophe of the Soviet Union. At this point, Churchill decided to help the Soviet Union because he wanted to destroy Hitler. For almost a month, he was trying to convince the Polish government to make an agreement with the Soviet government. Co trwało prawie miesiąc, do układu z rządem sowieckim. Poles insisted that it should have been a peace treaty because it was the time of martial law. For some reasons, the Soviets refused to admit that there was a war going on in 1939. Because it was a battle of words, and there is a saying in Poland that says it isn't wise to stand in a fool's way, Poles decided to meet the Soviets halfway by entering into an agreement with the Soviet ambassador in England which is historically called the sikorsky mayski Agreement. The agreement ended the war between Poles and the Soviets. All Polish citizens repressed by the Soviet Union were immediately released, regardless of their nationality. Oraz wypuszczeni zostaną wszyscy represjonowani przez Związek Sowiecki obywatele polscy. Bez, bez różnicy ich narodowości. Everyone, Poles, Ukrainians, Belarusians and Jews had the right to return to Poland. Everyone was to be evacuated from Russia. Also, the Polish army was to be formed. In the future, the army was supposed to fight for Poland's independence alongside the Soviet army. It quickly turned out to be impossible. Almost 200,000 civilians were released from prison. They were trying to get to the places where the Polish army had been forming at the time, but died along the way. 
people were set free with no food, no money, no return ticket. That is why the number of deaths here was much higher than the number of deaths in concentration camps where people had food rations. Finally, the Polish army formed in the Russian city of Buzulsk and Totskoya, located in the east side of the Volga River and led by General Anders, decided to retreat to the warmer regions of Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. The entire army, nearly 150,000 of soldiers and civilians, were transferred by trains and cars to the camp near the city of Tashkent in Uzbekistan. After an appropriate agreement concluded with Stalin, the army was transported to the port in Krasnovodsk, near the Caspian Sea. Later on, it was transported on huge tankers to Iran. They considered Iran a promised land after crossing the Red Sea, which was communism. Thanks to this, almost 150,000 people saved their lives. Unfortunately, Stalin broke the contract and kept the remaining 50,000 people in the Soviet Union by refusing them the right to leave. The Allies formed three corps, one in England, one in the Middle East, which was moved to Italy later, and the last one in France, at the time of the Normandy landings. The Polish 1st Tadeusz Kościuszko Infantry Division fought on the Soviet side near the city of Pozuchy and Trygubowo, which was called Lenino as a part of propaganda. Które propagandowo nazwano Lenino. As we have seen today, the Second World War had devastating consequences for Poland. Despite the country's best effort to fend off the German aggressors, Poland was occupied first by the Germans and then the Soviet Union until 1989. That's it for today. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History. Hello and welcome. It's time for another series of episodes in Poland Daily Travel. What's better to do on a bright, sunny summer's day than light out for the country? And that's just what we did. There are so many interesting and cool places near Warsaw to go and see. That makes a day trip full of adventure and surprises. We went west, first to Ozharov Mazowiecki, then cross country. Nearby Sochachev was the scene of the Battle of Bzura, Bzura River in September 1939. The last Polish cavalry charge defeated German infantry. There's a museum and the ruins of the castle of the Dukes of Mazovia. Another cross-country jaunt and we come to Brohov on the Bzura River. There's a beautiful church with the design of a castle. Chopin's parents married here at the turn of the 19th century. So it's Westward Ho from Warsaw for Poland Daily Travel. Stay with us and sit back and enjoy the ride. Poland Daily Travel, your favorite travel programming about Poland. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily, another exciting installment of travel from Poland. This is the best travel program ever made in English about Poland and maybe any other country in the world uh, that is not, that begins with P. So we got Paraguay beat, don't Pakistan. you think? Pakistan. We got Pakistan beat Peru. easy. We got Peru beat easy. Portugal. Paraguay. Portugal, we got them beat. <laughs> Paraguay, no problem. <laughs> we got <laughs> Panama? Easy. Panama. The cameraman says Panama. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Uh, the operator, I mean. Operator. They don't like it when I call him cameraman. They don't. They like, I prefer when I call him an operator. Well, that's more correct. I think we have to do a psychological profile and find out why. Yeah. Well, they, I have no idea. You worry them. You worry a lot of people. Yeah? You're going to ask me about my mole? No, your mole? Yes. <laughs> I was going to ask you, when you as, a real, as a real traveler, yeah. Do you, do you, are you like Bruce Chatwin? Do you carry around a moleskin notebook? Bruce who? Chatwin. Wasn't that his name? The travel writer? The travel oh, writer. the famous British travel writer. Yeah, exactly. Who wrote a book called Eugh. Yeah. Or something well, he like always that. had a moleskin notebook. He carried a mole. I just carry a mole. Uh huh. 
Okay. Just a mole. I an have some mole skin trousers. An animal. Yeah. yeah, I hope they aren't made from you know, any of my mole's relatives. No, you need a lot of moles to make mole skin trousers. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you're a mole skinner, you're in business in England. You certainly are. A mole skinner, get it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Not a mule skinner? No, mole skinner. You know what a mule skinner when the, they used to go with the cavalry in the old days? Well, I, I speaking was, of cavalry. I assume they, they, they skinned the mules. I don't, we weren't speaking of cavalry. We weren't, we are now. We were in a previous episode, though. We were. Yeah. We're still, we're still in Sahachev. I just couldn't leave. No, no. I wanna ha I wa we had an enjoyable picnic here by the river, didn't we? We did. It was lovely. Yeah. A few bottles of wine. And a couple of chickens. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some pickles. I think it would have helped if the chickens had been cooked. Yeah, we, did. we should cook them next time. <laughs> we should, and take the feathers off. That would take really help. Take the feathers off. Because my throat's feeling a bit strange. Yeah, I know. It's a bit, I feel I've rarely ever... Yeah. I wonder why it was hard getting started talking. At any rate, you may have noticed behind us an interesting edifice. Yes. Edifice? Edifice. Edifice Rex? Edifice Rex, yes. Yeah. An edifice Rex. That is... An edifice of the kings, the dukes of, not the kings, the dukes of Mazovia. The dukes, of, of this area, the dukes. Yes. and I know that because I got, I do no research. I know nothing. It's clear. I know nothing from the program except, <laughs> except what I'm told. Yes. Yeah? I yes. just, it's in the ether. It is. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not. You've, got to, you've got to do your research. You, I have to do research. When you've been in television a bit longer, you'll realize research is important. Really? I think so. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like hard work. I'm not going to do any reading. Oh, right. Reading is like passe. Yeah. We don't read anymore. Oh, do we not? I watch the YouTube. That's where ah, I get everything. the YouTube, yes. I watch the YouTube. Yeah. Every, complete education. I know that the Earth is flat. Yep. That there was no moon trip, and there may not be any actual moon. It was all shot in Area 51. It was shot in Area 51 by uh, Stanley Kramer. No, uh, the other guy. Kubrick. Uh, it's Stanley Kubrick. He's the other Stanley. Yeah. I call them the two Stanleys, but I'm just like that. Kramer and Kubrick. The two Ks. Two Ks. The two Stanley Ks. That's why I shouldn't be leaning. Was that, I have to ask Cameraman, I <laughs> leaned toward you. you I was lead, supposed you to do lead, that. No, Cameraman don't like that. I was given the firm instructions, don't like that. do not lean towards Cousin Nicky. And I, I refuse to do it again. I will never do that again. Um, but at any rate, you may think that 60 kilometers from the great and bustling capital, uh, you would get no information in English. But that would be wrong! Because here, a beautiful pamphlet in English from a nice fella in the tourist, uh, in the tourist office, and it tells you the attractions of Sohachev. Many attractions, and there are some. Uh, even in a very small town, uh, there are good ones. And one of those is the ruins of the Dukes of Mazovia, who were here until 1476. That's right. From about 1350. About 1350. Yeah. And uh, the castle, uh, of course, predates them slightly. It does? About 1286 is the first mention of the castle. Have you been doing research again? Well, I try to because, you know, I'm used to doing history programs where we need to have a higher standard of factual accuracy. Great, Scott. But it was about 1286, the first Stop mention of the castle. Stop with all these facts. You're confusing Mentioned, me. actually, typically for, and, and, and in some ways, sadly, you may think for Poland, mentioned the context of an invasion by the Ruthenians and Lithuanians. A who? Ruthenians? Yeah. And Lithuanians. The followers of Ruth? Exactly. And the Lithuanians. In twelve eighty six. Followers of Lith. Yes. But the, Ancient people. Anyway, but the, the castle was the sort of centre of the Dukes of uh, Mazovius from about uh, mid fourteenth century to about fourteen eighty six or seventy six or whatever you said earlier. I think I said fourteen seventy six, but yeah. I have no idea. If I think that's you meant fourteen. Correct or not? I read it here right. in a pamphlet I was given five minutes ago, fifteen yes. minutes ago. But the, the, the castle was actually, I think first it suffered major damage during the Swedish invasions of the in the deluge so-called in the mid 17th century yeah the Swedes came through here the Swedes like came... a bunch of latter-day Vikings and just ripped everything apart they were they were very what that, the heck is wrong well, that with was the those in the days when the Swedes still had their sort of Viking feelings you know they were sort of quite rapacious and they had a number of quite interesting monarchs like Gustavus Adolphus and um, Queen that Christina like a problem with the acid and, and, and Charles the Twelfth were all quite military folks. So, and, and of course, Pomerania being quite close, was, and then going down from Pomerania, the ancient well, Palm people. Exactly, it was quite yeah. an interesting uh, battleground, and tied up, of course, with the Thirty Years' War and all this sort of general European. How long did that Thirty Years' War take? It took about thirty years, funnily enough. Is that right? From about 1618 to 1648, which I think in 1648 was the Treaty of Westphalia. Ah, the year of the the the. 
The Treaty of 1648? Yes, Westphalia, which sort of settled things for a while. Ah, Westphalia. Yes. That sounds like some, if you don't have enough oxygen, you get Westphalia. Yes. That's not true? I yeah. don't know. At any rate, uh, do you want to hear about some of the other exciting attractions? Yes, because there are more than just You probably know about these because you do research. But <laughs> I, I do I, research, yeah. I know nothing. Um, 700 years of history in Sohacha. Butchered in one minute. <laughs> My boat and daily travel. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed. Destroyed. <laughs> worse, yeah. Poor worse Sohacha. Than the, worse than the Swedes. Poor Sohacha. They're going to hate this episode. No, I like it here. No, it's, it's very, very nice. This it's is a very beautiful. interesting uh, town. Uh, in all seriousness, it's a beautiful place. And uh, I, I'm excited because I didn't know there were castle, the, the, right. the Dukes of Mazovia had a palace here. Yeah. I didn't know the river was so nice here. And because uh, I didn't come here on my bicycle trip, no. I just missed it out a little bit. And uh, the uh, military museum, yep. very nice. So, yeah, there's good things. There's also um, the thing that is most interesting is the narrow gauge railway, which my friend Ra Ranger Kasha. A friend of the show, Ranger Kasha of the Campinas, I call her. She uh, raved about the railway. She raved about the railway. She says it's amazing. And uh, uh, they have, it's apparently the biggest narrow gauge railway museum in Poland and Europe. Right. Well, it probably so, would be, actually. Yeah. Would, uh, I'd like to ride on one of the narrow gauge train because that's a lot of fun. It's like an old western or something, isn't it? So the, the original transcontinental railroad was, it was a, not narrow gauge. It was, it was not narrow gauge. No. What was it? Well, normal standard gauge. Was it? And yeah. what do they use narrow gauge for? Smaller, smaller trains. Just small trains for, for small people, midgets. No, but I think for, for new, when they were children, local and and, and, and a lot oh, of. Oh, you mean like uh, not carrying much freight and yeah, not exactly. going a long distance? Exactly. Just for uh, so it's like an earlier version of a tram or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. Isn't it really? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this one ran from here in Sohachev over to uh, Tulevica, where there's a... Uh, a what? Palace? Manor house? Okay. But it's privately owned by an artist. I forgot his name. But apparently, uh, I, I didn't even call to see if we could go in there. But, uh, sorry, I leaned in. Sorry about that. Um, it's a nice palace, though, okay. from the pictures I've seen of it. Well, maybe we'll give a, we can knock on their door. And uh, they'll set the dogs on us, no doubt. <laughs> That's the normal reaction, yes. <laughs> so what happened everywhere else we go. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Is it any wonder? We get no respect. We're like Rodney Dangerfield, the two of us. We're like the Dangerfield twins. No respect, except from you, lovely viewers of Poland Daily. We're here in, where are we? Sohachev land. Sohachev, yes. Sohachev land, I call it. The, uh, yes, okay. The land of the Sohachevs. We so are. Ancient people. Very ancient city. Yeah. This was an important city. A hundred years ago, before the World War I. I mean, it's won. a city that has actually suffered a lot from various types of invasion. That's right, because I mean, it was after important the Swedes, Then, of course, this is a place where, during the Kosciuszko Rebellion, mm -hmm. this area was still under, after the second partition, was still Prussian. He came, he, he picked a fight with a, a, a Prussian garrison. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, at the third partition, this became part of the Soviet, or the Russian, as it then was, area of influence um, until the, at the end of the First World War, wow. when, when the city obviously was rebuilt, only to find, of course, as we spoke about earlier, suffered extensive damage during the Second World War. So it's, it's been a, a city with a yeah. long history, but yeah. inevitably... With or, a beautiful history, but not much architecture to show for it. Because it, the, it's, the interesting architecture has been destroyed been at, at regular intervals, yes. unfortunately. For hundreds of years. For hundreds yeah. of years. As you, as you have so eloquently. Thank you. If, if not to say loquaciously explained. That's very kind of you, yes. You're most, well, we, most I, well. I like to do Your it. verbosity is it's impressive. It. Thank you. Yeah, Thank and you. that's one of the reasons you're here. To fill out the awkward silences. <laughs> Exactly. But I'm just looking at the camera going, what? <laughs> Are we on? Yes. Are we on? No, we're off. Poland Daily Travel. That's the end of this episode from beautiful downtown Sohachev with the Dukes of Mazovia looking over our shoulder, folks. See you next time. Thanks for watching.